Hi there. So we're going to look at modes again today. Uh, we looked at the major modes previously. Um, and all of that kind of stuff. And we found that we had a good um, order for the modes. We also noticed that the Aeolian mode is the same as the natural minor. In other words, it's got a flattened third from the major scale and also flattened six, seven. So instead of the major A major scale, which would be we have that flattened third and six and seven. It follows that if we were doing the modes of the natural minor, so let's say, let's, let's keep with all the white notes here. And let's say that we're working in A minor now. Instead of working in C major, we're working in A minor and we're A natural minor and we want to work out all the modes. Well, it doesn't take too much effort to think, okay, well, they're all the white notes. So if I just keep playing all the white notes, those are going to be the same modes. Now, those are the same mode names. They're the same shapes, the same intervals as the modes that we worked out last time for the C major scale for those modes. So it's just the same modes, but you start them at the Aeolian instead. So if you're working on the A natural minor, so you start with the Aeolian and then you just work your way up. So you have the Locrian, then Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, and then back to the Aeolian. So let's look at the harmonic minor scale. Now we're going to stay in C uh, as our kind of root key, um, just to keep things simple. So our C minor harmonic minor scale. So compared to the C major scale, um, what are the differences here? Well, we've got our flattened third and we've got a flattened sixth. So let's work our way up through the scales and see where we end up. So the first, the first shift upwards um, is goes to the D. Now, if you want to think about this in relation to the D major scale, what are the differences here? Well, we've got a flattened second and third, flattened fifth, natural sixth, flattened seventh, and then back to the root note. So we've got a flattened two and three, flattened five, flattened seven. Now, what does that what does that most sound like? Well, that's most like a Locrian scale, but with an with a sharpened sixth degree. So a normal Locrian scale would be but if we sharpen that sixth, that B flat, and make that a B natural, then we get this, this scale um, starting on a D, but it's using the notes of C minor harmonic. And so that is basically a Locrian with a sharpened six. Now, what happens if we go for the next one? OK, so that's an interesting scale. The only difference between that and the E flat major scale is that B flat has been sharpened. So this is a sharpened fifth. So we would call this an Ionian scale, which is the same as saying just a major scale. But with a sharpened fifth. And then, as you can see, we've still got the same notes we're using from C minor harmonic. We've got the E flat and the A flat and everything else is natural. Let's move up a step. OK, so what have we got going on here? Well, this is like a Dorian scale, which would be. Um, and when I'm saying a Dorian scale, I'm just referring to the note intervals. Remember, I'm talking about where are the minor seconds, where are the major seconds or your half step and whole steps. Um, if this was a Dorian, it would be the Dorian of our home key being E flat. And then we shift up a, up a tone 
start on the second scale degree, in other words, of that E flat, but playing the same note. So that's our Dorian. Now, um, we call it F Dorian because it starts on an F, but it's actually the home key, the root key, is E flat. So hope you're <laughs> still keeping up with me. I'm not confusing everybody. So we're, we're like a Dorian scale, but we have that B natural instead of the B flat. So it's a Dorian scale with a sharpened fourth. Now this one um, is effectively, well, it's called a Phrygian dominant and sometimes called a Phrygian major. Now the Phrygian itself would be In other words, um, just for the purposes of comparison again, we compare that to a G major scale. And we've got flat two and three. And flat six and seven. Now here, it's different because we need to have that to stay within C minor harmonic. So that's why it's called uh, the the dominant kind of is a little bit of a misleading I mean that's giving you that that kind of feel um, but actually um, you know we could call it the Phrygian major scale as the only difference is you've got that sharpened third degree there so just to summarize the Phrygian dominant or major is the flattened second and flattened six and seven okay so Moving up to the sixth degree, which is the A flat. Now, that does sound familiar. We all recognize that as the Lydian scale, so that's the that's like a major scale but with a sharpened fourth. Sharpen that fourth. That's got that unmistakable Lydian feel. But we need to have a B natural in here. So So it's a Lydian with a sharpened two. So that's our sixth degree of the C minor harmonic or the minor harmonic um, scale. The mode that sits on that degree is called Lydian sharp two. Moving up again. Right, now this is, a, this is an interesting one. Now we call this ultra Locrian. It's a bit of a weird name. And the reason for that is they've got, you've got all of the flat degrees and then you've got a double flat at the very top. So let's, let's just have a look at this. So we're starting on B. We've got to have the E flat and the A flat in there. There's a big jump at the end. That's where the double flat is. That's that kind of augmented jump at the end. Now having that double flat at the top gives us a full diminished sound for this. And that's why it's called the Ultra Locrian, because you've got that fully diminished sound in there. So let's look at it. We've got flattened two, three, four, five, six, and double flat seven. So comparing that to the B major scale, obviously, we're, that's, we're always referencing the major scale when we're talking about which notes we're flattening or sharpening. So if we flatten all of those notes and then put the double flat at the top. OK, so it's a really curious and interesting sound, that one. Um, that takes us to the end of the of the harmonic minor. Now, let's look at the melodic minor. Let's get to, uh, two for the prize of one in this. So with the melodic minor, the only note that changes from the major scale is that third. It's that flattened third. All the other notes are the same. So this is going to make things slightly different because we haven't got that A flat in here anymore. So let's look at what, what the consequences of that are. OK, so this is like a Dorian scale, if you remember our Dorian for, that we built on in the major modes, uh, so C major. Now what's the difference here? Well, it's just that E flat. 
So we call this the Dorian with a flattened ninth, you can say, or second if you if you prefer. Um, there's different conventions. When we're talking about ninths and elevenths and thirteenths, um, we're simply saying that uh, if you extend the chord, so let's say we have a, a, a C minor chord, and we're adding a ninth, so the eighth note is obviously the octave, ninth is, is that one. And so that's uh, in some ways, in, in some contexts, a more pleasing sound than... It's <laughs> a bit tricky to argue. I'm, I'm trying to find a justification for why, why it's been overcomplicated over the years. But um, that's what we are. So we call it a ninth or a second. So going back to our scale here. This is the Dorian scale with that flattened ninth or second. And we'll come on to, we've got a, a 11th. The 11th is simply the, the fourth degree of the scale. So you go eight, so back in C, eight, nine, 10, 11. So that's the F, um, so that's the same as the fourth. And then the, the uh, 13th is the A, which is the same as the sixth. Super easy. Um, for some reason, nobody ever refers to as uh, the 14th degree. <laughs> Um, which would be the leading note, um, or the same as the seventh. Uh, don't know why that is, but there we go. So, moving up again. Okay, so what is that? That's very similar to a Lydian scale. But it has a sharpened fifth degree. So we call this Lydian sharp five. There's the sharp five. So nice and straightforward, that one. Let's move up to our F. So we're on the fourth degree now of our C minor melodic. Now that's very similar to our Lydian scale. But it has that flattened seventh. So it's referred to as a Lydian dominant, sometimes a Lydian major, but usually Lydian dominant scale. Because it has that dominant sound, it's got that, that flattened seventh. Essentially, it's the Lydian scale, but with the flattened seventh. Um, so you've got sharp four, flat seven in that scale. Okay, moving up. So this is very similar to our G mixolydian. if you remember, and that is the mixolydian of the root key of C major. Um, but what's the difference here? We've got that E flat, so we're flattening the sixth. Love the sound of that. So that's basically mixolydian flat six. So you've got a flat six and a flat seven. So moving up to A, So this is very similar to the Locrian scale, and, and uh, the only difference is uh, that we, we don't have a flat two. We've got a flat three, so it, if it was Locrian, it would be flat two, flat three, flat five, flat six, flat seven. But we have that natural two. So what we call that is semi-Locrian. Now moving up to the final degree, the seventh degree of this C minor melodic scale. We call this super-Locrian. The difference between the Locrian and the super-Locrian is this flat four. So if this was the normal Locrian, We'd have flat two and three, and flat five, six, and seven. Um, but the difference here is we've got that flat four as well. So we've got basically everything flattened apart from the, the starting and ending notes. So flat two, three, four, five, six, seven. And again, just I'm referring, um, when I'm saying flattened, I'm referring to what would be the major scale.
and it's super Locrian. It doesn't go quite the extent of the ultra Locrian because we don't have that fully diminished sound. We don't have that fully diminished sound, which, which is the double flat at the very top. So we just call this super Locrian, and that is the final degree of this C minor melodic scale. <laughs> just make sure I'm getting all of this right in my head. So um, that's I think that's enough for today. So play around with these, try them in different keys. Um, always remember that you're referring to a root or home key, which is um, which is the C minor. That's the scale that everything is built off. So you can always picture that scale in your head. If it's that harmonic minor. Um, and you know you're you're working on the sixth degree. Then just picture that scale in your head and just have a little play around on the keyboard um, and and just feel and get a sense of the kind of sound of that scale. You probably the, the thing is to try and understand all of this information not in order that you can reproduce it while you're in the moment trying to compose, but just so that if you get stuck or if you've got a chord that doesn't sound quite right, you can then, after the fact, go back to it and go, oh, OK, I can see why that doesn't work. And it's because this note is not necessarily leading correctly to that note. So we'll we'll come back and in the next um, one, we'll have a look at um, uh, there's there's one more uh, set of modes which I really want to um, look at, which is quite exciting. Um, but we will come back to that and then we will look at actually using these in the kind of uh, heat of writing um, pieces of music and how you can try and short circuit the all the kind of theory uh, of it um, to get yourself into the frame of mind to be creative. At least that's what I'm hoping we'll be able to do. We'll see. So thank you very much for watching and see you on the next one. Bye bye.